Hello and welcome to the Wednesday, November 4th, 2020 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Yesterday I mentioned attacks that we are seeing against our honeypots installing Cobalt Strike using the WebLogic CVE 2020-1488-2 vulnerability. These attacks are ongoing and Renato has published a post now that at least at a time when this podcast moves live should also be live on the ISC website. Cobalt Strike is significant because it does point to attacks that then use a manual follow-up. So this goes beyond the sort of fully automated attacks that we have seen before installing crypto coin miners and the like. For example, ransomware is often preceded by Cobalt Strike. That's a tool that ransomware gangs like to then explore the network and install their ransomware. And well, once you're done patching WebLogic, uh, turn your eyes at SaltStack. SaltStack is a platform to uh, manage uh, systems. And we had a big vulnerability in this system back in May that uh, caused some large breaches. Uh, for example, a couple of Cisco servers and so were breached uh, as a result of uh, this vulnerability. This recent update fixes three vulnerabilities and uh, while SaltStack hasn't added uh, official severity rating yet, well, uh, two of them are high or critical and probably should be because they do allow unauthenticated access uh, to the Salt API and via that to the SH client. One of them is a shell injection vulnerability in the SH client. The second one sounds almost easier uh, to exploit in that it says, well, it's a broken authentication. Any value for the eAuth or token value would allow a user to bypass authentication and make calls to salt SSH. So as long as you provide some token, uh, you're good to go. The only mitigation offered for these SH client vulnerabilities is to apply the patch and also to ensure that the SALT API has been restarted after applying the patch. And well, with all of these uh, critical sort of enterprise-ish vulnerabilities, it's nice to see that we also have a very regular Adobe Reader and Acrobat patch that was released today. This one uh, fixes a total of 14 security flaws and uh, three of which are considered uh, critical in that they allow for arbitrary code execution. And these vulnerabilities affect Windows and Mac OS. And if you are a JavaScript developer and you're writing code to interface with Twilio, the SMS and voice messaging platform, well, be careful what package you have loaded to accomplish that. The official package is called Twilio Note. Over the weekend, a malicious package was released, Twilio NPM. The malicious package does establish a very simple backdoor. It basically just pipes a bash to an ncroc.io URL that can then be used for complete remote control of a system that has this package installed and running. And since this is a Outbound connection, NAT won't help you. And in particular for developer workstations. And so you often don't necessarily restrict outbound connections like this, even though uh, this one I believe is using a bit an odd port. And Google's project Zero has released an advisory after the 90 day grace period ran out about uh, numerous injection vulnerabilities in GitHub Actions. This particular happens uh, with workflow commands that are being included in GitHub Actions and uh, they 
are susceptible uh, to injection attacks. If you're using any of this, uh, take a look at uh, the Project Zero blog that I'll uh, link to in the show notes. GitHub has not yet addressed this particular issue and it uh, doesn't look like there is a sort of simple, straightforward solution for this. Well, uh, that's it for uh, today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.